Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 7 of Direwolf20's server play series. I am just getting back from a little bit of a mining trip that I've done. Uh, I've got a little bit of interesting stuff that I'm kind of like throwing into my chest here, just, you know... All kinds of goodies and toys. Um, there's a few things though that I'm gonna want to do um, just to kind of get situated. Um, I think I'm going to expand my house this episode but you know you guys don't necessarily need to watch me build a house so I'll probably be expanding that off camera and then uh, doing a proper move-in. Um, I have a bit of a design in mind uh, you know to get started it'll probably be pretty basic but we'll definitely fancify it later on down the road down the road um so let's see what do we got here i've got all my stuff and uh between the episodes uh, i decided to go mining and i decided i really wanted to make myself some forestry backpacks so i want to show you these guys um they're really cool there's several forestry backpacks available and if we look them up on uh the, the little list here we can see all kinds of good stuff there's the miners and the diggers and the foresters the hunters and all kinds of other crazy backpacks that you can get and upgrade and eventually have all kinds of cool stuff with right so basically what these guys do um, is automatically pick up items from the ground that match. So anything that matches the miner's backpack, like anything that counts as like ores and gems and that kind of stuff, will automatically go into this backpack. So if it's on the ground and I pick it up, instead of it going into my inventory, it goes into the backpack. Cool, right? Uh, so it's a really nice and handy way to get things going. Oh, cool. This thing and I was making sand. Don't mind me. Cool. Uh, and the um, diggers pack back here, this guy is going to collect anything like stone and dirt and gravel and looks like even flint. That's cool. Um, but the cool thing about the diggers backpack and all of them for that matter is you can shift click and you can actually like um, lock it so that they don't pick up anything. You can uh, hit a green arrow, which means they'll get filled up um, from stuff when you right click on a chest. And then you can have a yellow arrow, and what that'll do is it'll automatically resupply any items or stacks in your inventory with items from the bag. So for example, this bag has a bunch of cobblestone in it, and it's set to resupply mode, which is the yellow arrow. When I place down a piece of cobblestone, notice that the stack of cobblestone automatically replenishes. That's because it's getting pulled out of the backpack here, and it's going uh, straight back into that stack. So it makes it a lot easier to build stuff much faster. And then any excess cobblestone you pick up is going to go straight into the backpack because, yeah, like, you know, that stack's full. Pretty cool, right? So lots of nifty tricks and gadgets that you can do with the forestry backpacks. They're very, very useful for when you're ready to go mining. And speaking of that, I'm going to uh, put all this ore into my auto processing system, minus the aluminum. Remember, aluminum doesn't get um, pulverized or macerated. That's all good. And uh, I'm also going to set this guy back to orange mode so that things actually start getting smelted and taken care of. Beautiful. So, things are going well. I got myself a bunch of cobblestone by doing a lot of mining with my hammer. You can see it's got a bit of durability damage there. Once it gets pretty low, I'll go ahead and add the, um, you know, upgrade on to let it be charged with redstone flux, but we'll get there. For now, um, I'd like to go build a house addition. Yeah. I think that's a bit of a plan. So what I'd like to set up in my house, uh, first off, I'd like to actually build a house, like more than just a single room, right? Um, and then we're going to expand from there. So let's see, if I wanted to build one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, it's right up against my farm. That shouldn't be too much of a problem, though. I mean, I can, I can kind of go right up to there. I mean, I might have to move some of those things, but that's all right, too. Definitely. So I'll probably just wind up cleaning up most of these. You know, the berries are cool. I'm going to want to move them somewhere else. I'm just kind of planning out my house, and then we'll, we'll get to building it in a moment here. There we go. Awesome. That looks pretty nice. All right, so um, that'll be like the first part of the house. I'm going to expand several rooms out, and we'll just see how long my, um, you know, inventory of cobblestone here will treat me. All right, we'll be back in just a few minutes once I've actually built a bit of a house up. All right, guys, how does this look? Nah, not a bad house, right? I mean, you know, it's nothing fancy, but I don't think you guys come here for my amazing design skills. A 9 by 9 main house, a 9x9 item storage house, and then a 
larger, not so 9 by 9 but pretty close to it storage room for uh, probably going to have all my machines be in this room. And since we're going to have a lot of many, many, many different machines, you know, this room may not even be big enough and need to be expanded at some point. But at least for now, you know, we've got kind of the basic workflow going. So uh, just going to fill it up. And don't worry, we will definitely um, move past the cobblestone at some point. I know for some reason a lot of people just don't love the way cobblestone looks. I don't know why. It's I, I think it's nice, but, you know, it's not everybody's cup of tea. That's okay. We will definitely get to a point where we uh, replace this cobblestone and we'll do it in a fun and interesting and mod-friendly way. But for now, it's, uh, it's going to suffice, and we're going to call this place home not bad right cool so you can see here i'm just uh clearing out some terrain gonna have uh, a, a flooring made almost entirely of cobblestone and then i'm probably gonna go actually dig down below because more often than not when i have bases like this i like to have a uh, basement and the basement is going to serve to store um, a lot of the kind of uh, stuff that you don't need to see all the time like you know i, I tend to build things out such that the basement holds let's say, like most of my power generation, power storage, and behind the scenes stuff that I don't need to interact with all the time, where the top levels of the house where I'm actually living in and, and spending my time is gonna be pretty much like the machines that I use all the time to do all my crafting and that kind of stuff. So that's kind of the plan. Um, so, so far it's looking pretty good. And like I said, I'm not the best builder in the world. I'm fully aware of that, you know. Um, my houses are typically pretty bland, but then it's about getting the mods and all the different different machines and infrastructure built and automation. That's where the fun comes in for me, at least. So I've got a basic house to live in. I've got some nifty clear glass on the ceiling, which looks awesome, by the way. It's like I don't even have anything. And remember, you want an F7 here to, to kind of see like where you want to fill in your lighting. So we want to make sure we don't miss any lighting anywhere. You know what I mean? Something like this and kind of around here. I'm just kind of spacing this out off the top of my head. I'll probably even it out later. Yeah, not terrible. Okay. There we go. See? You can kind of get there. Yeah, that looks good. At least for now. We will definitely have better and more interesting lighting methods. I'm not a huge fan of torches. I mean, yeah, granted they work just fine, but at the end of the day, they're just, you need so many of them to really light an area up sufficiently. F7 turns that off. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the plan. You can also see I'm over here. I've uh, attached a hopper to the side of my smeltery, and I'm smelting a bunch of sand and glass to turn it into molten clear glass, which is then being pumped over here. I'm getting a good supply of the stuff. In fact, I'm kind of done with it for now, but I'll let that continue. Cool. All right. So uh, I think next step, I'd like to move into my house, uh, well, at least the storage area. I've got a bunch of inventory and chests that I need to move around. So one of the things I'd like to do to kind of accommodate that need uh, is show you guys a new storage medium. Yeah, it's time to make some barrels. Uh, I've got some cherry wood. I'm going to make, I guess, four barrels here, huh? So barrels are really easy and straightforward to make. It's simply that. There we go. Cherry wood barrel. Awesome. I'm going to go ahead and store uh, all my cobblestone and dirt and all that stuff in here. So I'm probably going to just spend a few minutes moving this, and then I'm going to move my chests over to my main base. And I'll probably upgrade all my regular chests to iron chests. So why don't I move all my stuff between, uh, you know, this segment and the next. And then we'll be back to uh, check out, you know, more things. So I guess here's where I'll put all my cobblestone. Cool. Loving it. The one thing to note about this is, um, you know, when you do request cobblestone, uh, if you do have one of these backpacks here, you'll see that it'll go into the backpack if you don't have any cobblestone at all in your inventory. So just keep that in mind. Cool. Um, I'll probably just kind of... That might work. Yeah, that might work pretty well, actually. Okay. Back in a few once I've finished uh, doing what I need to do. All right, guys, so I'm going to make myself a golden chest. You can see here's another way to make them instead of doing the upgrades. I'm actually going to store all this stuff um, in the chest. But you know what? I've got an idea. Maybe I want to make some lock boxes. I know that's what they're called. But wow, that's actually, OK. Let's look it up by thermal expansion. Because I guess the word lock is in a lot of things, because it's in the word block. Uh, so we're looking for the strong box. That's actually what it's called, not lock box, strong box. 
Where are they? Here they are, strong boxes. Cool. Uh, four pieces of tin around a chest gives you a basic strong box. Let's get one of those going now. Tin, 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 tin. There you are. So I just need one more bit of wood. You can see I was clearing out my inventory in preparation for uh, getting ready to move a bunch of items. And I said to myself, hey, wait a second. I have a better idea. Let's show these guys how strong boxes work. Strong boxes are from Thermal Expansion, once again, and are very, very cool. Um, let's see, what do we got for inventory space in this thing? Oh, man, that's not much. That's hardly any inventory at all. All right, let's get our crescent hammer here and pick this thing up. Let's see, can I upgrade this? Oh, I absolutely can. Hardened strong box requires some invar. All right, how am I for invar ingots? I've got one. All right, let's get a few more of them. One, two, and one. Do your thing. All right, harden the strong box. That looks a little bit better. Let's see what's involved with this guy. Nah, now we're talking. That looks like a decent amount of inventory space. Just so you guys know, you can upgrade this thing even further by using hardened glass to get a reinforced strong box, and then uh, the endirium to get a resonant strong box. Cool. What's the tooltip on this thing say? Stores things securely. Can store things that store things so you can store things while you store things. Wrench while sneaking to dismantle. That's right. You can uh, pick this guy up with your wrench. Uh, the other cool factor about it is you can actually have a list of people who are allowed to access it. So with public access mode on, it works like any other chest. But if you put it on owner only, then you're the only person who can access this strong box. No one else can open it. Nobody at all. Uh, and then finally, you've got restricted mode, which is kind of a friend-based system. And uh, I'll show it to you here, even though it doesn't make a whole lot of sense because I'm playing in a single-player world, but just for your own information. Uh, Steer H friend GUI? Oh yeah, there we go, cool. So if I wanted to add a friends list here, so basically by default, I'm on my own friends list, but uh, you know, if I wanted to add somebody like Soren and I hit the plus button here, then Soren would be added to the friends list and we'd be good to go. So he can easily be added and removed from my friends list, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, then if it's in restricted mode, he can access it and anyone else on my friends list can access it, but no one else who isn't, all right? So you can give access to friends, everybody, or just yourself. Neat, right? So that's the uh, hard and strong box. And the best part about it is the following. Let's get um, all this junk out of the inventory up here. Okay, and I'm gonna store it in here. All right. You don't want to all shift in there at once, so that's cool, but no problem. I'll get it all over there. All right. Um, I'm actually going to get uh, these guys just to fill up my inventory. Okay. Check this out. Boom. That's right. The strong box can hold items while in your inventory. So it's got all this stuff in there. When you hold shift over it, you can see everything that's inside. And then uh, you can obviously just move it around and get stuff going. So that was pretty awesome and easy. So I'm actually going to relocate stuff. I don't know if I'm going to use the strong box as my like regular inventory storage. I'm guessing probably not. I'm probably going to want to use, you know, the iron and the gold chests. But for now, it's going to be a nice way to transport items. So let's take this thing back to our, you uh, you know new location here I'm gonna get myself another iron chest I'll probably make a few of these because I'm doing pretty good on iron right now so this will go into uh, storage for later actually let's get another one that'll do and we'll bring it over here oh it's nighttime good times please no creepers sneaking up on me All right, good. So uh, basically, I'll have um, some storage around here. You know, we might have uh, some stuff along this wall, some stuff along that wall. Over here, we've got our barrels set up. Um, you know, I'm probably going to have... I'm thinking, like, rare items here, you know, less rare items over here, and maybe mod-based items over here. That kind of sounds like a good plan. Um, so over here, I can just grab my uh, hard and strong box, place it down, get everything out of the inventory. And then over here, just poof, right? Um, now I'll probably reorganize this a little bit, right? So, um, you know, anything that's plant-based, you know, you're actually going to stay, and you guys are going to come out. You can probably go in here. This will be all my plant-based stuff, okay? Um, just miscellaneous blocks can go in here. I'm probably going to want another chest for wood, which I'll get to in a bit. Sand I was going to throw into a barrel. 
There we are. Um, yeah, that doesn't look too bad. Wood-based products elsewhere. Miscellaneous blocks. That's what I'll call this. Grindstone is a mod-based item, so that's definitely not going to stay in there. All right. So we're getting there. Let me uh, do a little bit more reorganizing of items, and then I'll be back. Just wanted to show you the strong box and how useful it can be to, to transport your stuff around. And uh, while I'm talking about how useful it is, I might as well grab it. There's gravel in there. You can go here. And I'll be back in a moment. All right, guys, I think I've pretty much moved everything. Uh, we've got miscellaneous blocks in here. Uh, flowers and plants and anything that grows goes in here, except for wood and saplings. They go in this chest. Anything that's a tree-based item or stuff. Uh, anything that drops from monsters goes in the mob drop chest. Uh, miscellaneous junk is just that. Anything that doesn't really fit in the categories already outlined. Uh, gems and dusts. Metals and ores. And then over here will be a wall of um, mod-based stuff. So I've got magical mods in this chest here, like Ars Magica and Thalmcraft type stuff. Okay. Uh, and as a matter of fact, you are Tinker's Construct, so you don't belong in there. This is the technical mod. This is for uh, build craft, factorization, applied energistics. We'll probably have industrial craft and maybe a couple other things going here. Uh, this will be uh, thermal expansion at Tinker's Construct. And then this chest is to be determined. Nice. I like this already. Uh, now there's a couple other things I would probably like to do. I'd like to make a filing cabinet, I think. Filing cabinet comes from extra utilities, and it's not terribly hard to make, but it's actually going to be very useful for us, um, especially coming down uh, a little bit into the future. Let's see. Well, do I want to do that for my one and only miscraft page I have, eh, maybe not. Filing cabinets are cool because you can store uh, almost any number of items in there that have the same um, item ID, but maybe different metadata or NBT tags, I think. So basically all your different pages from Mistcraft or, um, you know, just something that you would have like, you know, a ton of different um, types of, but it's all the same ID basically. So it's maybe something we'll get into a little bit later. For maybe now, I'll just store you in the miscellaneous junk chest. I don't feel like creating a file cabinet for just one Mistcraft page, but Maybe down the line we'll definitely have one. Uh, but then again, I usually wind up storing all the pages in a notebook anyway. So this is to be my machines room, huh? Okay. So I'm probably going to have like a bunch of machines all along this row. Probably a lot of thermal expansion machines. And then maybe on this area here, we'll have some industrial craft machines uh, eventually down the line, right? And then we've also got like, you know, this wall and this wall over here. So we've got some good stuff to do. All right. Um, so why don't I start digging out a basement, and the basement is basically going to serve as my um, basic like workroom, right? So there's going to be a bunch of stuff going on in the basement. Its main purpose will be, yeah, that looks pretty good. Maybe one more deep. That'll do. Yeah, that looks good. Uh, yeah, long story short, basement is going to basically be where I have a lot of stuff going on. So let me dig this out, and then we'll be right back. All right, guys, before we get too into making that room down there, and I'm probably going to use my filler to, to, to move everything around and clear it out nice and quick, but before we get into that, I'd like to make a little something special. Yeah, something very cool and fancy. How am I for gold? Oh, yeah, plenty. Let's go over here and put together the following. Is it this? Nope. I don't know why, but I always have a mental block on recipes like this. There we go, Golden Lasso from Extra Utilities. Another very useful Extra Utilities block. Hooray. Uh, I'm going to build myself an animal farm, at least a farm where I'm going to keep some animals. Cool. Uh, I thought you might like that plan. So I'm thinking maybe, maybe over here might not be a terrible place for it. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, this will look good. Golden Lasso is really, really useful, by the way. You guys are going to love it. Okay, one, two. Let me just get this cleared out of here. This is going to basically be my fence. And I'm probably going to upgrade these uh, fences a little bit later too. Yeah, that'll work. Cool. Let me just get a few more 
fences. That should be enough. Probably. Yeah, that I miscounted. Yeah, that looks not terrible, right? Cool. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I personally hate having to lead animals a long distance around to try and get them into my pen. Hence the golden lasso. Yoink! When you right-click on any animal, the golden lasso becomes enchanted. You can see that there's a sheep in there. Hooray! Look at that. Good job, sheep. So the golden lasso is just a nice, quick, and easy way to lasso pretty much any animal. There we go. You can even name them if you place this golden lasso in a, um, whatchamacallit, in a anvil. Yeah, you'll be able to name your sheep and that kind of stuff. So I wanted to get a couple sheep because basically I'd like to start, um, you know, maybe breeding them a little bit. How am I for wheat? I've got barley. I don't know if you can feed barley to the sheep. I know. Yeah, that might be something worth looking into. We're going to test that. But I've got wheat down there too if I need to. So that's the golden lasso. Very, very useful tool. It costs an ender pearl, but hey, you know what? Not everything can be too cheap. Uh, let's put our... I'm trying to keep my inventory a little bit clean here, and I'm completely failing. Uh, oh, I know what I came here for. I was talking to you guys about all the cool stuff you can do with lassos and whatnot, and I got distracted, and I'm like, why did I come here again? That's right, I wanted to make shears so I could shear my sheep. Haha. Ah. Come here, you two. Yoink. Very nice. Can I feed you this? I can! Awesome! Baby sheep, please. Thank you. Alright, you know what else I'd like is some cows, maybe even some pigs. Let me run around and collect some of them as well. There's a reason I'm getting sheep, by the way. You're probably like, I thought you were building a basement, direwolf. What's all this about? Yeah, we're getting there, don't worry. See, there's a couple more sheep. I could probably snag them. Alright, I'll be back in a few. All right, guys, we're back, and I'm getting ready to relocate my machines here. Uh, shouldn't be too big of a deal. Just picking everything up, basically. Get some out of coal in those things? Could have sworn I would have had some coal in there, but okay, that'll do. Unless they retain it, but I don't think they do. I'd be shocked if they did. All right, I think that's pretty much the last of the stuff I have to move out of my house. I still have my factorization gear in there, but I'll move that later. Um, the main reason I'm moving this right now is, if we come over here, we'll see. So I've got my, this thing, I've got my steam dynamo, leadstone energy, cool. All right, so I'm gonna run leadstone energy down here like this, okay? And I'm gonna have my, Pulverizer and pulverizer can go here, and redstone furnace can go here, and you're gonna start smelting up some sand for me just as soon as I give you a little bit of power. Yeah, there we go. Bottom is outputting energy, pulverizer is getting charged up, redstone furnace is cooking. Nice. All right. So I'm thinking if we go back into our basement here. It's going to be really annoying um, trying to get up and down in here. So basically what we want to do, I'm thinking that's about as tall as we're going to want to be. Yeah, that'll do. I want to have like a two thick, you know, a ceiling and a floor here. So, so two blocks thick, basically one for the floor of the base and the ceiling of the basement. That'll do. I think that's a decent sized room, right? There to there. Yeah, that should be plenty. And I could go always down one more deeper if I needed to, but I don't think I need to. All right, so do I have everything I need to do a clearing? Yes, but there's one thing I want to make before I get that going. And for that, I'm going to need a bit of you and a bit of you. Take an ender pearl, surround it with wool, and what do you get? An elevator block from open blocks. Oh yeah, definitely one of my favorite blocks available. Uh, let's take a look at how this thing works. Basically, uh, place an elevator block here and then place um, in a, a corresponding elevator block in another part of the room and jump. Ta-da! It acts like an elevator. And hold shift or whatever you've bound to your sneak key to go down. So cool. And it's a great way to travel. Beats ladders and stairs and anything else you got going on any day of the week. All right, so uh, let's see here. I'm going to want to clear out all the way up to negative 144. 80. I'll be right back. 
All right, if I've set everything up properly here, leadstone energy cell, conduit, we're going to give this guy the clearing formation, and I've built it in such a way that it should start clearing out the terrain for me. Cool? It shouldn't affect anything above ground, and it shouldn't affect anything there. Looking good so far. If we come down here, we should see... Hey, there we go. Nice. Look at that thing. Cruising. Nice. Gotta love it. Of course, you don't get any of the items that would have dropped from here, but it's such a better way to clear out a large space. Trust me. All right. So now that we've got that going, awesome. That looks really good. Uh, I don't want mobs to spawn down here, and you guys know how much a fan of I am of um, torches just being on the floor, right? Yeah. Huge fan. Huge, huge, huge not fan. Um, let's go upstairs and make something, shall we? Um, I would like to get, and I think I've got some in my metals and ores chest. Oh yeah, I've got some dark iron. Cool. I don't think there's any way... Oh yeah, I can. Nice. Lacerator. Okay. I'm gonna go process this stuff, and then if I get it here, I should get what? In the slag furnace? 140? Yes. Perfect. That's what I'm gonna do. Let's go process... Before I relocate my factorization stuff, I'm gonna go process my dark iron using it. I've only got a little bit of this stuff. This stuff spawns really, really, really deep down uh, near bedrock. Um, as a matter of fact, I know of one more that I actually just never got around to mining because I was going to just show it to you guys on camera what it looks like in the world. And it's way down here. Way, way, way down here. Uh, so yeah, basically, it tends to spawn really deep, like right next to bedrock. I'm at Y level 3, and as you can probably guess, we're like right near the bedrock layer, okay? Uh, this is pretty much where you're tending to find dark iron, okay? Cool. So if you really are looking for this stuff, down here is where to go. Ah, poison. I think that's poison. Ah, yeah, it's poison. I've got hunger and poison. Watch out for that stuff. Alright, meet you at the top of the stairs. Alright, not bad. Turned 6 dark iron ingots into 15 dark iron. Nice. Yeah, that's definitely the way to do it. Oh, cool, it's raining out. Nice. Hooray. Let's make that stop, shall we? Yeah, I bet. Alright, let's craft. I want to get a bit of silver. There we go. Two of you ought to do. We're going to see how well this works out. I might need a second one of these, but for now we'll see. I'm going to need a couple glass panes, and then I'm going to hover to my factorization. Remember I said these diamond block shards would come in handy? They're about to come in handy. Let's also hook this thing back up to where he belongs and let this smelt. Cool. Um, diamond shard plus nether brick gives you a special kind of lighter known as the wrath igniter, uh, which is apparently going away eventually. Yeah. It's only used right now for wrath lamps. Cool. Well, that's what I'm about to make. Uh, wrath igniter in the center with glass on either side of it, iron up and down, and for this dark iron stuff, get you a wrath lamp. Don't forget to bring your wrath lighter back with you. I'm gonna actually throw it in this chest here, which I've designated my tools chest. I'll have a tools pack later on, but for now this will do. So how about like right smack dab in the center of this area? Boom. So the wrath lamp is awesome in that it lights up a very large area of space. You can see here, um, I do have F7 on, so if I were to break this thing, which takes a while actually. Let's see. Come on, buddy. I'm not kidding. It takes a long time. There we go. So let's see, F7, all right, so that's where all mobs can spawn, right? I'm going to plant this thing right up there, and ta-da, lots of light. Beautiful, right? So that's basically what you're looking at getting. It should be broadcasting enough light to clean up over here. Yeah, there it is. It just takes a few seconds sometimes to reach the farthest corners, but rest assured that you will eventually get what you're looking for by way of uh, light. Awesome. I'm just going to get a little bit of smooth stone to clean up down there. But basically, we're able to keep this place pretty well lit. Awesome, right? All with one wrath lamp. Now, I might need to expand this area. I'll probably dig it out and uh, clear out under the rest of my house as well. But for now, it's a nice opening area that we're going to start uh, with our 
aqueous accumulators and our steam dynamos and I guess I'm gonna need to get just a little bit of coal and you can go away for now let me clean up my inventory and I'll be right back all right pretty straightforward setup here just going to recreate what I did back at the main location. I've got fluid ducts ready to go. Just got to wrench this guy because he probably already got a little bit of water in him. And I just need to get a couple water source blocks. And while I'm at it, let's see, do I have uh, how am I for buckets? Probably just need to make a couple, which I'll probably just do. Yeah, I know I can make buckets out of wood, but eh, I've got a decent amount of iron and six won't break my bank too badly. Cool. While I'm at it, I think I should make sure to carry around a lot of this barley, just because I want to be able to feed the uh, cows that I've got out there. Come here, you guys. Ah, baby zombie. The creepiest of zombies at all. He's got the brainy thumb craftiness. Thumb crafty evil brainy zombie. This sword, though, pretty good. Can pretty much two-shot most things. I think Endermen are still three shots, but I'll probably upgrade his uh, damage at some point soon. Uh, I wanted to come down here to get water. That's right. One, two buckets of water. That looks pretty good. Cool. Of course, if they're wearing armor, that two-shot thing doesn't count. I'll probably want to create an infinite water source down here just for regular use, just because, believe it or not, you're going to want to have infinite water pretty commonly. So here looks like a good enough spot for it. One. And. There we go, two. Awesome. Now we're talking. All right, producing energy, maybe? There we go, now we are. Just want to make sure it was set to input energy from that left side, which is where I have the um, pipe set up at. Unfortunately, you can see it from the outside, um, but that's something I'll be able to remedy in the near future. All right, guys, we've got the basic set up. I'll be right back. All right, guys, and it looks like it happened again. I was having so much fun, I lost track of time. So I think what I'll do, uh, maybe, is try and get a couple things crafted up between this episode and next so that I can get them laid out um, next episode when we get back. Um, then I'm thinking I'm pretty close to wanting to create a sorting system. Usually once I've got the chest room set up and I'm able to, you know, filter out where I want everything to go, I'd like to be able to automatically sort stuff. And for that, we're going to need a little bit of work and help. So... I'm going to uh, mine a bit and do a little bit of work, and then next episode we'll be back and maybe start on our sorting system, maybe just build a few more machines, and then sorting system, you know, an episode or two after that. We'll see. Anyway, for now, this is Direwolf20 signing off. Really hope you guys are enjoying the season so far and this episode, and as always, take it easy!